Hello and welcome to the next lesson about internet technologies. So by the end of this lesson we aim to have covered what an ISP actually is, describing again, just covering some more of the difference between the World Wide Web and the internet, and discuss the technologies that are used by ISPs to allow internet access such as ADSL, fiber optic and mobile internet. An ISP is an internet server provider such as O2, BT, Sky, Tok Tok, there are hundreds. Um, they are a company which provides you, as a customer, access to the internet. So when you connect to a network, uh, sorry, when you connect to the, the web, you are essentially connecting through your ISP to gain access to the web. Okay? So you are actually connecting to your ISP servers, which then allows you access. Now remember, we kind of covered it earlier on, but the internet is the actual collection of computers and networks that are connected together. It's the hardware, the physical machines and the, the infrastructure. The World Wide Web, so such as all your websites, etc., etc., they are actually hosted, i.e. stored, on the internet. So there is a difference between the internet and the World Wide Web. So, is the web a good thing? Can you actually imagine your daily life without actually having access to the web? No Twitter, no Facebook, no Instagram, no Tumblr, all of the other internet services that you use perhaps on it, even a daily basis would not be possi possible. So, you are advertised a download rate of 5 megasecond and there is a big issue at the minute if you don't always get the advertised maximum speed. Now, there are a huge amount of factors that could cover this. Um, the time of the day, the day of the week. So, if you are going on on a Saturday evening when everyone's bored and they're sitting watching their Netflix and downloading video and games and playing online games, the servers will be busy. Now, obviously, the busier the server is, the slower your connection might be. You might be downloading from a particular, if you're downloading a file for example, you might be downloading from a slow server. So if you can only, if that server can only um, download to you at a megasecond, it doesn't matter if you've got fiber optic broadband at 20, 20 megasecond, you can only download as fast as you get here, you can. Um, if your phone line is a long way from your local phone exchange, i.e. The, the cabinet where all of the phone lines go to, which then go to a larger um, higher traffic line. If you're a, the, generally, if you're connected through ADSL, which we'll come to later, the further you are, then the slower your connection goes. Um, also, how many people in your area actually go through the exchange as well? They can sometimes call that a contention ratio. And say that, for example, your connection might be sp your your um, exchange's connection rate might be split amongst 20 people. Now that depends if they're on it at the time and what they're doing, whether they're uploading, downloading, etc, etc. Um, some ISPs will actually quote what the contention ratios are, certainly they used to. And are you on Wi-Fi even? Um, so your Wi-Fi signal might be poor. There are a huge amount of, of, of issues. So what do we use the internet for? There's gaming, on online gaming, there's homework when you're actually doing some home home homework on the machi machine. There's e-commerce such as online shopping, online banking. There's social networking, be that the conventional ones, a la twi Twitter, etc., or um, sn Snapchat. Any of the other hundreds of so so social ne networks that that are on the go. And they're also da much more, now that internet speeds have progressed, I mean, I can actually remember in the late 90s our school getting its first dial-up connection which downloaded at 56 kilobits per second. Now you compare that to a broadband connection these days of me many megabits per second. Okay, um, we can now watch streaming video, streaming audio. Uh, some of the technology we'll look at will be ADSL, fiber optic and mobile in internet. Now there are more, but we're only going to cover some of them. Um, so, first of all, get used to uploading and downloading. So, wh when would you be downloading from the web? This would be any time you're downloading a file from a server onto your phone, tablet, laptop, computer. You are downloading a copy. And likewise, when you're uploading, you're sending a file from your computer, your phone, your tablet, to a server, to a, another device. So, that's uploading. 
Now, if you think about it, which one are you normally doing on a daily basis? You're probably downloading more than you're uploading. Unless you're a business or doing particular things, for example, you've got a, a, a YouTube channel, etc., in which case you're uploading some content. But generally, you're downloading as a consumer more than you're uploading. So let's look at broadband. Um, the government defined broadband as the minimum service commitment for broadband is 2 megabits per second. Okay, that's 2 million bits per second. So 2 million binary zeros or ones per second on a good day with the upper limit being about 24 megabits. Now this, particularly in the northeast Scotland where, where I am at the minute, this is usually achieved by using ADSL. Now if you're in other areas of the country, you may actually get um, cab cable access and that's, that's, that's a different technology. Um, ADSL stands for Asymmetric Digital Subscriber Line. What this means is that your download rate is usually much higher than your upload rate. Um, my own connection at home is sitting at about anything between a 10 to a 15 meg download rate with the upload rate of only about 1. Um, it is actually works by a quite a high signal frequency seg signal going down your normal conventional phone line. You put a little micro filter on the end that just helps to separate the two, the two signals so that your voice can go on one side and the broadband signal can go to the other which is usually connected to a modem which is normally usually a router. So the advantage being you can still talk and surf at the same time. If you were ever subjected to dial-up access, then that wasn't an option. You were either on the web very slowly or talking on the, on, on the line. You couldn't do both. Um, super fast broadband is becoming much more prevalent now and the EU defines this as anything more than 24 megabits per second. This is usually achieved using fibre optic networks where a signal of light is bounced down a very thin piece of uh, glass cable. Um, at the minute I think you can get connection speeds of about anything again depending on where you are etc etc of a few hundred meg megabits per second down download rate so much much faster than your normal broad, broad, broadband commitment. Um, so as I said these cables are made up of glass and plastic um, allows it to move much faster than copper. Remember copper wire for your normal phone line was never never endeared to actually um, transmit broad to broadband. That's a fairly new new development. And as I said, the fastest download rate, well, the fastest maximum download rate is they say you can get about 300 megabits per second, and that's September 2013. But remember, that's a maximum theoretical, on a good day, perfect line, good server. These are not available to everyone. The local exchange needs to have a fair amount of equipment installed and they need to be able to get that to your to your line as well, to your home, sorry. Um, mobile in internet, very similar to your mob mobile phones. Um, for example, if if you worked away from home and you had a laptop and you weren't in range of a local hotspot, i.e. a Wi-Fi spot, you can get a USB adapter, plugs into your, your USB port and essentially it's like a, mob a mobile phone it would allow you to access usually a 3G network. You may get 4G ones now. Um, so that would allow your machine to have some, end some, some net connection. It does require mobile network coverage. It's essentially looking connect connecting to a, mob, a mobile phone. The download upload speeds again can be quite slow, but that's purely dependent on your um, your connection, and they can be expensive because you might actually be on either a contract or a pay-as-you-go. We are using vast quantities of data. 